Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel Anna Bella and today I'm going to be doing a Warhammer Age of Sigma Mortal Realms review issue 50 and issue 11 because at last you should have all of your pieces to put together the mausoleum. So with issue 15 you get the bases and yes I was right they do have grooves for where your side pieces need to go. But also they have very pretty interiors as well. So I'm not going to be actually able to put all of this together today because I don't have any black spray paint. But I do have glue. And here's the second piece. So you get the bases for the little tombs and mausoleums and you get more fencing. Do not glue the fencing together for this. Don't. It needs to be separate out and it needs to be reusable don't glue it together like they don't don't do that because you want flexibility with how you use your scenery later on so that's what it looks like in the spruce for the bases and the sides this is issue 15 let's have a look through it i'm gonna have issue 12 not issue 12 issue 11 sorry so it's issue 11 and issue 15 side by side so let's have a look and see what we get in mortal realms 15 so we get the children of the storm storm hosts one the realms of war history three the death flesh eater courts the court of the cannibal king how to paint the mausoleum you don't get building instructions in issue 15. It is just how to paint. Uses a lot of black. The charge of the harrow and the setup for battle. So that's the magazine. In issue 11, you get how to build. So let's get the building instructions out. Yeah, I'm so annoyed that they are so annoying. All right, how to build. Okay. So that. You can put that safely with issue 15 out of the way whilst we do this building project. I'm going to cut or clip out these using my clippers so i'll see you guys when i've done that okay i'm going to give you the tour of my mausoleum so far because there are some things that you can build straight away there are some things that you shouldn't build straight away and there are some things that you should definitely not glue together first off we're going to talk about fencing do not glue the fencing i'm going to say that twice do not glue the fencing and thrice for good measure do not glue the fencing because you're going to need it Yes, it's great in this more slim set, but you can use it individually on a battlefield. If you need a fence, here's a pre-made fence. All you've got to do is paint it. But I don't have any black spray paint at the moment uh, due to lockdown, so not going to do that. So you should have a fence. So I'm just going to put all my fencing here. There's another fence. This one is a wall with skulls. Look, even roses. Adorable. This is really important, this little alcove, because it goes right here, there, and creates that little roundel. Don't glue it, because you may need it. Here's another fence. And here's the back gate on the wall. Don't glue that. Don't glue it. In fact, it tells you on the instructions not to glue things. Okay, I'm going to flip over and look at what you can glue really easily. Here we are. This guy, he's really easy to glue. So he's just the statue. You put him together and you stick him on his plinth. Voila. I will lazy sue him later. He can stand between the two harlows or harrows or whatever you want to call them. Ta-da. Almost painted. Next that I am able to put together completely is no... Oh, it is. It's on the back. It's the fence. It's this part. 
So I've got my little crow, my little cross, my gates, and these one, two, three, four little panels that go there. Yeah, that you can glue really easily. But look, even tells you here, do not glue the fencing. Yeah. But you can glue this onto the base. Glue the fencing in. I mean, the gates in. <laughs> and voila. So that's your entranceway. So those things you can glue straight away. Not a problem. Then we have the issues. For the people who've already glued these together without the base, you're going to be a bit stuck because, as I predicted, these bases have grooves. So what I've done is because I actually want to paint the inside of these tombs rather prettily, even though that you're not going to see it, but I will know that it's there. That's the cat leaving the house. I've glued on one side and one back wall. So when I spray paint it, I will be able to paint the insides at the same time. This one also comes with, look, you can glue this little turret together, look. So you can put those two pieces on the top because that fits on like that. You will see. And then the side will go like that. And then like that. Also comes with... Hmm, Two cute little gargoyles, which will need gluing for this piece. And this cover. You can cover your little dead dude in there completely if you want to, but what is the point? You can also have him slightly peeping out. I've decided to keep it like this because it gives me better paint options. Because they're both really pretty. The little dude in here has got little details I might want to paint. And this guy... And the top of the tomb also has little details that I want to paint. So there is that. So hence why I've done construction and then stopped for painting reasons. Oh boy, this mausoleum is going to be a heck of a paint job, people. I can see that one happening. So that's that one. The next one is this. And it's the one that's got the insignias on the side and the um, timepiece there. It's got a simpler tomb inside, but I've essentially done the same thing. It also has really helpful grooves for fitting it together. So if you already put this together and it doesn't just slot on, oh dear. See? See, that will fit in quite nicely in there now, in those pre-aligned grooves, she says. Yep. And then the side bit will fit on like that. Make sure, when you're gluing the side bit, that you glue the points nearest that way, because otherwise you're going to end up with points at the end and points at the top. Yeah, it's just going to be a mess. So make sure you do it like that. Ta-da! Obviously with this one it doesn't apply, because with this one you are making that kind of structure. That's that. Next! This one comes with two cute little gargoyles. Look at these little fellows. Aww. And it also comes with a tomb inside. But it's slightly, slightly trickier. You see you've got this rod of plastic there and there. That is where you put your piece. Yeah? At the end. Not at the front. Not down here. Not there. At the end of those rods. And it's the same with the spikes again. Make sure you've got... Some at the front, some at the back. And it should slot on like that and then like that. But I'm not doing that at the moment because of paint options. And you want to make sure the tomb looks is going to look good. Because guess what? You're going to be able to see it through there. Same with this one. Through there. Imagine if you just plonked these on and didn't paint the inside. You'd be a right mumpet. A mumpet? I've invented a new insult. A mumpet. I've no idea what that means, but there you go. A mumpet. I think I was trying to say muppet, but came out mumpet. We can live with a mumpet, whatever that is. Okay, so fencing. Don't glue. Put in a couple of your sides and then don't do any more. Focus machine. Thank you. And do what you can do. Okay, 
should look like this. I'm now going to get my lazy suit and spin some models. Woohoo! So here we are, I've got the lazy suit out and I've got the statue dude. So we're going to go and have a look at him first. I've got the two harrows. As you can see, I've been busy painting those. This guy's not been painted yet. This is just how he comes. So, there he is. He's got his timepiece, a skull, a sword and a shield. And his, there he is on his little plinth. There's my harrows. Really like how they're turning out, by the way. So, that's this dude. Next is the gate. Ta-da! Yep, crow. I think mine's actually crowing the wrong way around. Or it could be that my gate was facing the wrong way around. But this is the back. Yeah, this is the back. The gate. And this is the front. You can tell that by the handy crow at the top. Don't glue it to your fencing. My fencing is now in that blue plastic bag over there. Next as are the rest of the side pieces and the gar gargoyles. Gargoyles? Gargoyles. Oh boy, English. So there we have this one, half put together because I want to do a nice paint job on that. Next. So this is this one, this tomb. Same as the other one, half put together because decent paint job is required. This is the turret for the top of this one. So this is what it should look like when put together. There we go. Remember there's a dead dude inside this tomb. Very similar to the others. There's a bone and a skull. I love the detail on these. Never underestimate the detail. See that will eventually go on there like that. I don't know if you can spin it. No, it's going to fall. Oh, no. So that's what it eventually will look like. Hope you have enjoyed this review. Slash put together of part two of the mausoleum from issue 15. Remember, you need issue 11 and issue 15 to make your mausoleum complete. Now, if I flip issue 15 over, we will find out what we're going to get in two weeks time. Issue 16 is Stormcast Reinforcements, Sequenters and Castigators. So we get two dudes with repeater bolt throwers and three dudes with axes and um, shields. Well, two dudes with axes and shields, one dude with just an axe. And then in issue 17, you get five of these Dread Scythe Haradins. So that's going to be interesting. Issue 17 and issue 16. Hope you've enjoyed this review slash look at how we put the Sigma Sigmaritine Mausoleum together. You need issue 11 and issue 15 to make this work of Warhammer Age of Sigma Mortal Realms. Please like, comment and subscribe and thank you for the support. Stay safe everybody. Bye!